allow me to reintroduce to you the Eagle Karn. There has been a recent change to the Eagle Karn that is issued to trainees at the reception battalion in order to purchase certain items to prepare themselves for army basic training. In this video, I will discuss with you what is the Eagle Card, what is it used for, what is the most recent change, and how it all works. But first, roll with the intro. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sergeant First Class Swartz, your local New York Army National Guard recruiter conveniently located in Midtown Manhattan, and I am never too busy to help you become a citizen soldier. With that being said, it is my hobby to create videos for future soldiers preparing themselves to get mentally and physically ready for Army-based training, recruiting-related videos, and other Army-related things. So if that's what you're here for, do me a favor. You may want to consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon so that you don't miss anything. The reason why you hit that bell icon is so that you get notified every time I post a new video, but more importantly, when I go live because I answer your most desired questions for Army Basic Training and oftentimes bringing on a drill sergeant or a former drill sergeant to also provide their insights and tips to how to prepare for Army Basic Training. So welcome to Team Swartz and welcome to another Basic Training Survival Tip video. So what exactly is an Eagle Card? I'm glad you asked. When I went through Army Basic Training, I assumed that this was free money. And <laughs> that's far from the truth. It is not free money. In fact, the Eagle Card is a cash advance of your pay, so they will deduct it from your paycheck. All walks of life join the military. And here we're talking about the army and everyone has different financial backgrounds. Some better off than others and the army doesn't want to have to embarrass you if you happen to fall into the category with less than desirable financial background or ability to pay for certain items that are going to be needed for army basic training. So the army advances a specific amount of pay to this Eagle card to afford you the opportunity to be able to purchase those items without embarrassing yourself or creating any hiccups or slowing you down from processing through the reception battalion. So if you don't know this, the army doesn't have any time to deal with these hiccups because the reception battalion processes between 500 to 900 trainees per day. So you're going to feel like cattle zigzagging throughout these lines processing throughout the day. So they don't want this issue um, stopping you, preventing you from moving on to your training. So let me give you a little bit of backstory. In the last couple of years, the army um, used to do things differently. There used to be, you know, certain things for males, certain things for females. And the army is slowly moving to an age and gender neutral, essentially equality among everyone within the army. So certain MOSs or military occupation specialties are essentially your job within the army were closed off to females like the combat positions like infantry, field artillery, so on and so forth. So the army opened that up to females and they can now perform and do those jobs within the army. Now they haven't lowered the standards so that leads me into the army physical fitness test which was created I believe in the 80s and it's comprised of three events, the push up event, sit up event which both are done in less than two minutes and running two miles in the shortest time possible. It is age and gender specific. Because they opened up the MOSs, the combat MOSs to females, they created the OPAT test which is the occupational physical assessment test which is based or rated on how heavy or physically demanding your MOS is. So the higher the, the rating, the more difficult that test would be. So the OPAT is the Occupational Physical Assessment Test, like I said, comprised of four events, which is the seated ball toss, the standing long jump, the shuttle sprints, and the deadlift. Not in that particular order, but if you fail this OPAT test prior to leaving for Army Basic Training, your training ship date should be canceled and not continue to be rescheduled until you pass it. So that is age and gender neutral. The Army is transitioning from the Army outdated Army physical fitness test to the all new kicking off this October the ACFT or the Army combat fitness test which comprises of six events also going to be age and gender neutral. So no, no matter what your MOS is it doesn't matter if you're male or female all the standards are going to be the same similar to the OPAT test 
if you have a physically demanding job, you can have a higher standard versus somebody like me who's an, basically administrative as a recruiter with the lowest rating. So I'm not going to have to work as hard on this Army combat fitness test compared to somebody who's infantry or mechanic or something along those lines. So I say all this to say that in the past, this Eagle card used to have varying dollar amounts. Males would have $250, females would have $350. Now, the newest update is that these Eagle cards are the same across the board, flat rate, $350. Again, moving from individuality based on your gender to equality. So what is this Eagle card good for? What is the purpose behind it? The purpose of this Eagle card is to purchase items that are needed for army basic training. So this list is not exclusive. It's, you know, I may miss something, but in general, what this card is for is that everyone in basic training needs to have only authorized products and items that are used for basic training. And to create uniformity, everything has to match based on color. So you will be strongly suggested, as a Joe Sorry would say, because they can't technically force you to buy anything, but they do. You will need to buy a specific color towel, washcloth, underwear, socks, no logos, all from the Troop Exchange, which is a, a variation of the Post Exchange or PX for short. A PX is essentially like a department store, like a Target or something along those lines. So the Post Exchange is only gonna have items that trainees are authorized or allowed to have at Army Basic Training. But as a trainee, do not get excited when you see snack or beverages like soda and stuff like that because that's not for you. That is for you, Drill Sergeant. So don't even bother grabbing it because if you do, prepare to get stronger. Now you're not. Technically, they're not supposed to like tell you that you can't have sugar, but if you do, drill sergeants will make sure you burn out those extra calories. You will also purchase shower shoes, which are gonna be black. They're cheap, they're only like a dollar or two. You will purchase personal hygiene kits. Oftentimes, they will have personal hygiene kits for males with male products and a female personal hygiene kit with female products. Sometimes, they often include locks. And if you, they, they don't have locks, make sure that you get at least two locks, whether it's a combination lock or a key lock is based on your preference. Drill sergeants prefer you to have a key lock so that they can keep the spare key in their office in the event that you know you lose your key. If you forget your combo and the drill sergeant doesn't have your combo, guess what? You cut your lock, gotta get a new lock, and you're screwed. Bonus tip, always make sure your wall locker is locked, no matter what. Don't dummy lock it, because they will catch you and you don't want to see the aftermath. Do not bother bringing running shoes to Army Basic Training because you're not going to be authorized to wear them. While going through the reception battalion, you are going to be getting your feet checked out to see if you're flat-footed, normal arch, or high arch by standing at a glass box with a mirror set at a 45 degree angle to see your footprint. So based on your footprint, whether you're flat-footed, normal arch, or high arch, they'll tell you which one of these three columns that you could purchase running shoes from. I happen to bring some running shoes that I was not authorized to wear, so I couldn't use them until I got to AIT. And these shoes look horrendous. In my opinion, they didn't work that great. They were, they were just downright horrible. But that's what's gonna happen. Highly suggest that you buy Q-tips, not only just to clean out your ears, don't be a dirty mother flower, your Q-tips will be used to clean your rifle later on. So get the biggest package of Q-tips that you possibly can, because you will need those when you clean your rifle later on in basic training. Cough drops. If you are authorized to buy cough drops, buy as many allowable bags of cough drops as you possibly can. Most training SOPs is no more than two bags of cough drops. Cough drops are considered currency, so you will eventually learn what fire guard is and what CQ is. So if you don't feel like doing fire guard that night, I'll give you like five cough drops if you do my fire guard at 0100 this morning. Trust me, people will do anything for cough drops because essentially it's kind of like candy. That's why I said it's kind of like currency. You'll thank me later. If they have it there and they authorize you to get it, I highly suggest that you get moleskin to place on your heels for your ruck marches. Not so much the shorter distances, a three to five K. Um, once you get up, we're up, up there to like nine kilometers or higher, you might want to wear some moleskin on your heels to prevent blisters because quite honestly, they hurt like a mother flower and some people get really bad blisters. Again, don't bother going to Walmart, Trader Joe's, or any other location to buy things in bulk because oftentimes because of certain chemicals or fragrances that are in those products that you're trying to get for your shampoo, conditioner, soap, and so on and so forth is not going to be allowed in basic training. And you don't want to pack a lot of stuff because that's a lot of weight. At the reception time, you're going to receive everything that you need for basic and you're going to have to carry that and everything that you bring because you'll see dumb mother flowers that bring like literally like a luggage on wheels and you're going to have to carry that in addition to everything else that you get issued at the reception battalion. And if you know anything and haven't seen the videos about shark attacks 
At basic training, there are bag drills and you're gonna have to hold everything above your head. So the less you bring, the better. In fact, I highly recommend my team Swartz packing list because don't make the same mistake I did with my recruiter giving me this huge laundry list of items to bring to Army basic training. You don't want that. Trust me, you're gonna wanna leave with basically nothing or the bare essentials that I recommend in my list. So after this video is over, do me a favor, go down in the description below and click on the link of what to bring to Army basic training in 2019. So if you made it this far into the video, do me a favor, put a hashtag Team Swartz in the comment section below and that will tell me that you are my MVP. If you have an idea or a topic that you would like me to cover in a future video, do me a favor, comment that below in the comment section and I'll be sure to do a video of that topic for you and give you a free shout out at the end of that video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. That's it, video's over. Sorry, um, but you could definitely watch more. You can check out this video here, or maybe you can check out this video here. Um, but you know what? Actually, this video is pretty good. You, you should definitely watch this one. But actually, this one seems pretty great. You should definitely check out this video. But actually, why don't you watch them both? Try clicking the both.